I'm going to say this once. I'm going to say this nicely. I'm going to say this as concisely as possible. This is a mother and baby's health specific issue. The pervasive problem is that women think that just because they gain fat during pregnancy, that they have to return to their body's pre-baby body composition as fast as possible. Here's what you need to do. You need to care for the infant that you now have that has spent the last nine to 10 months in your womb and is now in the world utterly and completely dependent on you for care. The best way you can care for your infant is by breastfeeding. Scientists haven't been able to replicate the way your baby's macronutrient needs, I'm talking about protein, carbs, and fat, adapt over time, nor have they been able to replicate at the exact moments when your baby is ready for a different ratio of whey versus casein proteins. Only breast milk can pr produce the <laughs> exact antibodies that your baby needs. These are called immunoglobins. Immunoglobins are going to protect your baby from viruses that you're exposed to so that there is a reduced chance that they get severely ill or sick. Postpartum and breastfeeding is not the time for dieting. Your body's current body composition is not more important than your baby's health, no matter what influencer or societal pressures that you may feel. Instead of asking yourself, how many calories do I need to burn to create a caloric deficit in order to lose weight fast, I instead, I want you to be asking yourself these seven questions. What foods support and boost breast milk supply? What foods maximize my internal organs, specifically the uterus's recovery? What helps heal C-section scars and supports perineum healing? What foods support postpartum hormone balance? What foods are going to naturally improve my metabolism? What will help detox air pollutants, plastics, molds, and carcinogens from my body so I can stay healthy for my baby? How can I eat so that I don't energy crash? How can I eat so that I don't nosedive into the pantry at every nap time or bedtime? Now let's take a holistic look at the postpartum hormonal environment because you need to understand how your postpartum hormones are a bit stacked against you at accelerating weight loss to your pre-pregnancy weight. The reason is when you have your baby, progesterone and estrogen hormone, they steadily decrease for the first four months postpartum. Then they plateau and that's what causes the lovely postpartum hair loss, but don't worry, it only lasts for about a month during that time. Your oxytocin surges after you have your baby, which can help you decrease your appetite, but then it will decrease, 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 which causes postpartum blues and an increased appetite. Cortisol is going to go up and down, kind of like a roller coaster, unpredictably, due to the new stressors that you have. when you are beyond exhausted, cortisol rises and this is going to cause cravings. Meanwhile, you are getting low amounts of sleep compared to what you did pre-BB. This causes a decrease in serotonin hormone. Serotonin is what allows us to say, no, I'm satiated, I'm full, and stop going up for thirds at dinner time or to get on a snack train. Meanwhile, it is going to increase ghrelin hormone. Ghrelin is responsible for our appetite. We are going to feel increasingly hungry even when our body already has enough fat stored. Prolactin hormone is the hormone that you need for breastfeeding. When prolactin hormone is high, this is going to make you to want to eat more frequently than you usually would, which can create a little bit more caloric intake and make it harder to lose weight. Over time, if you are someone who nurses your babies for 10 months, 12 months, 18 months, or beyond, you are going to have elevated levels of prolactin hormone. This can go hand in hand with leptin resistance. Leptin resistance means it's harder for your body to signal your brain that you are done eating and can make you want to go back for additional snacks even when physically you don't need more calories in your diet. But don't worry, God created our bodies perfectly and wonderfully made, and there are just two simple things that you need to decrease your leptin resistance, to decrease cortisol, lower inf inflammation, and stabilize your blood sugar so that you don't have as intense cravings. These two keys are consistent exercise and healthy diet. So Ashley, what should I eat? If I had to narrow it down to my top 10 
postpartum foods that are going to help you balance your hormones, decrease your leptin, support natural, healthy weight loss in a way that isn't forcing your baby while also keeping your breast milk supply high. I eat these foods all the time myself. They're all inside my mom cookbook to save you time and make life easy, remove the brain work, and actually give you recipes that your kids and husband will enjoy and want to go back for more. These are my top 10. Number one is leafy greens. I'm talking at least a cup or two every single day kale, spinach, or other dark leafy greens that you enjoy. Garlic and onions, walnuts or almonds, beans. I'm talking chickpeas, black beans, pinto beans, or lentils. Sweet potatoes or butternut squash if you prefer. Blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. I'm gonna lump these all into one. Free range eggs, free range grass-fed beef, whole wheat English muffins or whole wheat toast, and oatmeal just the old fashioned oatmeal that's really cheap and easy to make. I eat between 2,800 calories and 3,000 calories per day while exclusively nursing and following my 12 week post pregnancy plan workouts. Know that your caloric needs involve so many different factors, including your age, your height, your body composition, remember your more muscle will increase your basal metabolic rate. This accounts for 60 to 70% of your overall metabolism. So the more muscle you're carrying naturally on your frame, the more your caloric needs are going to be greater. Your exercise activity, 12 week post pregnancy plan, non-exercise activity, are you running around after other children? Are you changing diapers on the floor? Are you doing your own chores? Are you cleaning your car? This will increase your non-exercise activity and your metabolism as well. And lastly, the thermic effect of food. Eating foods such as beans, chicken, beef, eggs, tofu, these will all increase your metabolism because it takes more energy to break down protein compared to what it takes to take to break down carbohydrates or fat. So you're shooting for around 30%, 20 to 30% of your diet to be protein, and this will maximize the thermic effect of food without getting an excessive amount of protein that your body will just store as fat and then pee out the excess amount. If you're in a season where you are weaning your baby or your baby loves solids and your baby quit nursing for whatever reason, you don't need a luscious, plentiful breast milk supply anymore. You can now safely lose weight by decreasing your caloric intake by 250 calories per day. If you do this for two weeks, you're going to lose one pound of fat. Another way you could do it is slash calories at 500 calories per day and you're gonna lose one pound per week. However, I do not in any case recommend this method because you are going to increase your chances for the boomerang effect, going back to your old ways of eating. You have a high risk of actually lowering your metabolism by losing weight too fast. Your body will think that you need less and less calories in order to keep going. So it can become like you got stuck at this floor, this plateau, and you can't lose weight anymore because you lost weight so quickly up front. So slow and steady is always better. I encourage you to sip water throughout the day because if you're even a little bit dehydrated, this is going to decrease your metabolism. And know in the back of your mind, if you are on the 12-week post pregnancy plan, the 10-minute plan, or lean, fast, strong cable plan, and you are looking for hypertrophy, I'm talking about muscle growth and tone to sculpt and shape a really strong and fit, athletic-looking body, this is going to be extremely hard to do so if you put yourself in that 500 calorie per day deficit because your muscles need energy in order to repair themselves and grow back stronger and more dense, taking up less space than fat. And they can't do this if you are on a harsh diet. Last thing, before you misunderstand my intentions, if you are not a breastfeeding mother, know that I know there are a hundred different reasons why moms do not breastfeed. And regardless of your personal circumstances or your reasons, know that I support you because you're a mother and you love and you care for your baby. I just want to empower you with education and inspiration and motivation and a healthy perspective on weight loss postpartum. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what really struck you, what you're going to introduce more of into your diet. And if you have questions, I'm here and I'm happy to help. I genuinely care about each and every woman in the Sculpt Body PT community. And I'm so grateful that you choose me to be your trainer.